Well, hello and welcome to another Simply Gregster EV review. Behind me is a 2023 Polestar 2 long range dual motor. And we were out filming with it yesterday. We went on quite a long road trip and it was about 900 kilometers we drove and we charged at five CCS sites, including one Tesla Magic Dock in Deep River, Ontario, one of the first in Canada, actually. And I'm always reading in the, in the media here that you can't bring an EV on a road trip unless you have a Tesla because there's nowhere to charge it. So we ended up doing five charging stops yesterday. We didn't need to make that many stops. I just wanted to check out the different networks that were around to charge the um, vehicle. And whenever the media is doing, out, is doing their own test, they always seem to bring some sort of Nissan Leaf or it's a Nissan Leaf that is an older one that might not have the greatest battery so it doesn't have the greatest range but this one here is actually a proper car this is something that someone would actually buy peak charging 150 155 kilowatts quite a large battery in it 78 kilowatt hour battery so we're going to use some footage from what we filmed on that trip in this video and we're just going to break it down i'll be up in my office we'll be breaking down the different charging stops and uh, and the providers so sit back relax enjoy and let's try to get rid of some of those myths so the first site we stopped at was electrified canada in ottawa uh, no issues here sometimes this site could be a bit uh, problematic with it not working we hit 145 150 kilowatts at this site no issues this site's charging uh, 46 cents a kilowatt hour with a Pass Plus membership, which is $6 a month uh, plus tax. Again, uh, there are card readers here as well, so you don't necessarily need the app. Next up is the Tesla Supercharger Magic Dock in Deep River, Ontario. We did a whole video on uh, this site, including the drive out there and the scene previously. A uh, bit expensive here, 81 cents a kilowatt hour plus tax. Tesla does have a membership for $20 a month. It reduces that to, I believe, 65 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, again, if you do use the Magic Docs often, I uh, guess it could make sense. For us in the video, we just want to try out the site. Again, no issues using it here. App worked flawlessly. No issues at all. The next stop we made was in Ottawa at a Jewel Energy site. Uh, they're charging between 37 cents a minute up to 50 cents a minute, depending on speeds. These um, top out about 150 kilowatts. And obviously you pay based on whatever speed you're charging at. It's uh, billing by the minute, which is becoming rare now since we moved to kilowatt hour billing. It does have a uh, terminal, a uh, card payment terminal on the unit itself, which is nice to see. There's no apps that I could find that work with this. And I believe that's our whole ideology behind this type of uh, setup. The charger is in a big shape of a, a J. Um, the site was quite full. We didn't stay for very long, but no issues here connecting or uh, charging everything. The next one up here is going to be a AB, ABB Terra 184 at uh, the Circle K in Lancaster, Ontario. Um, if you do follow this channel, you know I'm quite a big fan of Couchard and uh, Circle K's charging network that they are building out. Um, this site here is 43 cents a kilowatt hour. It's been like that for quite a while. You do need an app to activate it, but uh, they do have payment terminals on the uh, dispensers themselves. And I was told recently at the site in Montreal that you could go inside and pay and they'll authorize a, a certain amount on the chargers. Um, this one was a bit of an issue. We couldn't get a connection properly, so we had to move to the charger next door to in, to initialize the charge. Once that, um, yeah, we had no issues charging up here. It is under repair now, one of the um, chargers at this site. And as you see here, we hit 152 kilowatts, no problem. And we did arrive at quite a low state of charge. So there were no issues here really, but if uh, it was down, you would have a problem. Yeah, next up is the Petro Canada site. Um, this is a BTC Energy site. So this is the same charging um, equipment as Electrified Canada with the backbone of their network. This site was actually really, really nice, but also pathetic because it was only outputting 100 kilowatts shared between the two posts or via two um, uh, charger dispenser, whatever you want to call them. But it was free. It's just so sad that Petro Canada built 
the this charging network at their gas stations and the sites are broken they're derated broken equipment um there was a, there was a missing cover on the um charging handle again it was free but it was maxed out at 50 kilowatts and if someone else plugs into you then you it, it, it lowers it even more so it creates more of an issue uh, but again no issues initiating a charge it did work so i have to give them that and coming up here uh, as a summary uh, we drove 829.2 kilometers that day we charged five times i guess i said we didn't have to charge five times we just did it for the sake of the video and information gathering but yeah there were no real issues uh charging that site in lancaster and the petro canada one were the only broken ones i could say well broken but they still ended up working so there you have it we did the um five rapid chargers on uh, that road trip we did leave home at 100 percent state of charge i didn't mention that i should have uh, charged up from 68% to 100% overnight. Uh, electricity here is, I would say, around 8 to 10 cents a kilowatt hour. I haven't really noticed any uh, differences in um, our um, electricity bill throughout the course of the billing cycle, which I believe is every every 60 days or 65 days, something like that. Anyways, uh, yeah, only issue was maybe that uh, Kushtard, Circle K, ABB, Terra 184 that broke. That doesn't happen often. Usually their network is very solid, but there was another one next to it that worked. But if you were busy, it it could be a problem. But uh, I think it's been rectified. I contacted, I contacted them very quickly and they flagged it immediately. Uh, and today, Tesla opened up these superchargers for Ford. That's um, a plug and charge. So basically click in the um, Tesla supercharger cable into the adapter, plug it into your Ford vehicle and it will charge right away and then bill your account later on. That's what we're doing going forward. It's just gonna be plug and charge and maybe we're going to see more uh, card readers on the um, dispensers, chargers, whatever you wanna call them. Um, because right now you need a lot of apps and that's really annoying that you continually have to have to load money onto these apps and then every time you get low it, it tops up $25 or $50 depending what the minimum um, amount is so then you have two or three hundred dollars floating across five or six different apps and one you might use more often than the other so that's probably going to come to an end once um, they figure out the uh, payment terminal issues uh, Electrify Canada, they do work. Kushtard Circle K, they have them coming online. They are on the units. They are coming online soon. Uh, Circuit Electric, you're still app-based. I don't think that's going to change because they have RFID cards associated with your account and most of the network is uh, RFID card-based or app-based. I don't think that will change for Circuit Electric. We are going to do a video on them shortly. Uh, and what else can I add to this? Um, yeah, the most disappointing one was the uh, Petro Canada site. Uh, it did it did work. I'll give them that it did work. If I was in my mini, 50 kilowatts is fine. I wouldn't be complaining because that's the maximum charge rate. But if you roll up there, I don't know if you roll up there like like in the Polestar, for example, that's going to really suck. Uh, if you roll up there in any uh, eGMP platform, so EV6, Ionic 5, Ionic 5, 6, whatever they are now, um, yeah, that's going to really suck too. Uh, or anything that charges over 50 kilowatts, that's really going to suck. I mean, great Mini Cooper, Mini Cooper Electric, Chevy Bolt, uh, Kia Nero maybe. Yeah, a anything besides, uh, uh, well, let's add the Nissan Leaf. Yeah, anything over, over 50 kilowatts is really going to suck, but it is free. But that seems to be a, a reoccurring uh, theme with Petro Canada is that their sites are all derated or broken or or something. So yeah, um, hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I know I could ramble on a lot, but I just want to get it out there that the videos that you might watch in the media, I don't think they're very representative of what the actual charging space is like in terms of uh, road tripping. Uh, I just did a road trip to Toronto in our gas car, unfortunately, and uh, yeah, the charging looked pretty good. I checked it out every time I made a stop. It looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I think there's still a lot of thinking and maybe a bit of planning going on if you have EV charging on longer trips, but that is getting better. 
as time goes on, you know, the supercharger networks are, 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 are opening. You see more and more uh, third parties building their, their own networks. So yeah, it is getting better. So sometimes these pieces in the media, they don't tell you the uh, full picture from an actual person who owns the car, uh, who has a CCS en enabled car or, 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 or a Tesla. You always see these weird cases like a, um, um, a degraded Nissan Leaf battery sitting at like six, I like six bars on, on 12 and they're going on a 400 kilometer trip. So yeah, just keep that in mind, keep an open mind about EVs and uh, hopefully we'll see you out there on the road. Uh, thank you for, for watching. And again, I apologize that this video ran r really long.